On August 18, 1920, the 19th Amendment granted women the right to vote. The law primarily helped white women while black women and other women of color faced discrimination and intimidation when they tried to assert their right to vote. Many accomplished black suffragists, such as Mary McLeod Bethune, Mary Church Terrell, and Josephine St. Pierre Ruffin have not received the recognition they deserve. These black women fought fervently for the right to vote. Despite their hard work, black women were forced to march separately from their white counterparts during rallies, and even after the 19th Amendment was ratified, Jim Crow laws in the South kept black women and men from voting. It wasn't until these restrictions were lifted with the passage of the Voting Rights Act of 1965 that black Americans could exercise the right to vote. This exhibit highlights a few black American suffragettes. We encourage you to do your own research and learn more. As an African-American journalist, Ida B. Wells produced activist work that highlighted the intersection of gender and race. She didn't just fight back against the system physically, but also intellectually. Wells used her gift of writing and devotion to democracy to further anti-lynching and women's movements. She helped found the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People and especially shed light on experiences of black women. Wells is still recognized as a civil rights and women's suffrage luminary today because of her courage and action during times of adversity. A charismatic speaker, Sojourner Truth was a preacher, abolitionist, and the first known black suffragist. Born in 1797 as Isabella Bonfri in Ulster County, New York, she was enslaved until she ran away in 1827 to an abolitionist family who paid for her freedom. She then moved to New York City where she worked for a local minister. She eventually changed her name to Sojourner Truth when she felt the Holy Spirit call her to preach. At an Akron, Ohio women's convention in 1851, she delivered her famous speech, Ain't I a Woman? Mary Church Terrell, a daughter of former slaves, was a member of the black middle class who used that standing in society to push for racial equality. She was one of the first African-American women to earn a degree from Oberlin College. While residing in Washington, D.C., Terrell taught Latin at the M Street School, the country's first public high school for black students. During this time, she immersed herself in the women's rights movement, co-founding the National Association of Colored Women's Clubs with Ida B. Wells Barnett. Terrell's words, lifting as we climb, became the group's motto. Terrell also founded the National Association of University Women, whose founding purpose was to promote fellowship among women professionals while encouraging young women to strive for professional excellence. Terrell toured the country lecturing on women's voting rights, noting in her speeches and writings about the hypocrisy displayed by white suffragists who fought for women's rights while disregarding those of black people. Born, raised, and educated in Oberlin, Ohio, Mary B. Talbert was an educator, activist, and co-founder of the Phyllis Wheatley Club, the Buffalo, New York chapter of the National Association of Colored Women's Clubs. In 1905, she helped found the Niagara Movement, a civil rights organization that was a precursor to the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, where she served as vice president. Her years-long campaign on behalf of women's suffrage led her to serving as president of the National Association of Colored Women between 1916 and 1920, transforming it into a nationwide organization. And one of the achievements of her tenure was saving and restoring the Frederick Douglass home in Washington, D.C. In addition to writing articles about the suffrage movement for The Crisis, which was the official publication of the NAACP, 
Talbert was a gifted speaker, becoming international voice for black women while touring abroad and lecturing on women's rights. Nanny Helen Burroughs was a devoted educator, religious leader, and feminist who believed that black women and girls should have greater opportunities for job training and careers, and she made it her life's mission to empower black women. Burroughs attended the M Street School in Washington, D.C., which is where she met her mentor, Mary Church Terrell. Burroughs helped co-found the National Association of Colored Women, as well as the Women's Auxiliary of the National Baptist Convention, an organization of more than one million women that she led in support of women's suffrage. In 1909, she convinced the National Baptist Convention to establish the National Training School for Women and Girls in Washington, which was funded exclusively by black donors to educate and train black women. She served as president of the school until her death in 1961, after which the school was renamed in her honor. Frances E. W. Harper, who was born in Baltimore in 1825, is known for her poetry and writings that criticize slavery, racism, and gender inequality. After being introduced to a range of literature while working in a Quaker household as a teenager, she became an abolitionist speaker and worker on the Underground Railroad. She supported her family with her speaking engagements and published poetry and prose collections including Forest Lees from 1845 in the novel Iola Leroy, or Shadows Uplifted, in 1892. She was a founding member of the American Suffrage Association and attended conferences and meetings concerning women's rights, including the Women's Convention of 1866, where she shared the platform with Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton. It was there that she addressed the racial discrimination that she experienced as a black woman in a predominantly white suffrage organization, saying, you white women here speak of rights, I speak of wrongs. Josephine St. Pierre Ruffin was a journalist and activist focused on engaging black women in New England on the issue of civil rights. She joined the Massachusetts Women's Suffrage Association in 1875 and co-founded the Women's Era Club in 1893. The Women's Era Club was one of the first public service clubs for black women that advocated for black voting rights and other civil rights issues. The club joined the Massachusetts State Federation of Women's Clubs in 1895. Soon after joining, a controversy erupted. Ruffin demanded to be recognized at the National Federation's annual convention as the delegate of a black women's club. The national group's president had not realized she had admitted a black club to an all-white national federation. Ruffin was not recognized, but her point had been made. Ruffin also established the club's newspaper, the first national newspaper for black women, which he edited and published from 1894 to 1897. 